what's left of democracy in the sense of what remains of democracy as it's being practiced today. Can democracy as practiced now survive in the 21st century? So those are some of the questions that uh, we want to address uh, in, in this forum. And um, so uh, without further ado, I will invite uh, Saudara Ahmad Fuad, who is a research fellow with the Islamic Renaissance Front. He will be the first speaker. He will uh, present for 20 minutes. And after that, Dr. Nasil will, will also uh, similarly present his, his talk for 20 minutes before we open up to a time of discussion and Q&A uh, for the rest of the night. So, um, I invite... What? So basically, what is socialism about? In other words, what are the ideals that ground socialists? Right? What do socialists believe in? Right? What are the foundational principles of socialism? And why? Right? So what do we believe in and why do we believe in? To start off with, I think it will be good to, uh, to make some clarifications. Right? Socialism is not a welfare state. Right? Socialism is not the state ownership of things. These two things have been associated with socialists and socialist countries and socialist um, policies. But we can talk about why and how those things came about and how they're not necessarily socialistic. We can talk about that during the Q&A session. But to start off with, just so that we get to the, the core of the issue of what socialism is about, I would like to ask for you to distance yourself or disassociate whatever uh, connections you have with these two things with socialism, because they don't have to be socialistic in practice. Right? Well, socialism does not have to have anything to do with welfare state or state ownership of things. Nor is socialism the claim that everybody must be the same. Right? Socialism is not against individuality. So if you can recall back to the description of the Soviet Union right back in the day, when they say, oh, Soviet Union is terrible. Everybody's the same. We can't be different. We can't express our individuality. Right? No, that's not exactly what socialism is about. In fact, as uh, we continue talking, we'll realize that socialism is actually very appreciative of individuality, right? The question here is, at what cost do you, do you express your individuality? That's what socialists are concerned with. And socialism is not a utopia, right? It's not a state of affairs where there are no problems. It's not a state of affairs where all problems are solved. That's not what socialism claims to be. Socialism is better than capitalism, but it doesn't solve all the problems of, of mankind, right? So as we... Um, Consider the basic principle of socialism. I want us to just put these, if you have any conception of socialism being about any of these things, I just want to ask for you to just put them aside as we consider the, the core. Freedom, issues. basically free development. Yeah, we'll talk about what that means uh, soon. Equality, in that one person's pursuit of freedom cannot happen at the cost of others. And then solidarity, right? An association, by that we mean a conscious, deliberate, willful um, erection of a society that lives up to this principle. Right. So, in the next, in the remaining time we have, I'm going to try to explain how socialism expresses these three values. Right. So let's talk about the more abstract and probably perhaps most contentious uh, claim, right? So, the socialist vision of freedom. So what does free development mean? If we say we want an association of free development whereby the free development of one is a condition for the free development of all, what does free development mean? Basically, we're asking what is the socialist vision of freedom? Right? In discussing this, there are a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. The first is that I want you to keep in mind the liberal conception of freedom. The liberal, the liberal conception of freedom, we all know, is free, freedom to be left alone, to do whatever, right? right? Leave me alone, don't get my business, that's very liberal, right? And, um, and it has, of course, we all know, you know, implications in the free market. Right? And um, basically freedom to choose, right? Very broad, the liberal conception. Socialist conception of freedom are going to say yes and yes, but not exactly. Right? So socialists take the liberal conception of freedom as a point of beginning, 
but it's going to add more content to it. Right? And we're going to look at how the socialist vision adds content to the, the first level of free development. Right? As humans, we're dynamic and we have potential. And this is just a simple observation about what human beings are like. We can always be more than we are now, basically. Right? So let's say if you're a, a doctor or an engineer or, or a lawyer or a painter, you can always know as you're doing your work that you can always be better. Right? This is something about our tendency as human beings to always project in the future. Right? So, for example, if you're an engineer, you go about your day-to-day -day life, you realize, you know what? I can, I can continue being better at my work. Right? Or it doesn't have to be in the realm of occupation. It can be in the realm of your sort of personal, uh, sort of personality, right? I want to be healthier. I want to be, uh, I want to learn languages. I want to constantly improve myself. I'm going to be a better Muslim, a better socialist. You're always thinking that there are always better possibilities. Right? And that's what Marx meant by the fact that we're dynamic. We don't have to stay the way we are right now. Right? We can always continuously improve ourselves. So in one sense, free development just basically means that, right? We are always, whether we realize it or not, thinking of how to cultivate and pursue our potential, right? And we don't have to be the best in the world. It's not about that. We have an impulse to continuously improve ourselves uh, as individuals, right? So socialists take that as a point of departure, right? This is what human beings are like. They have control over their lives, ideally, and they want to uh, fulfill their potential, right? We have a des desire for self-actualization, and we see a life as a chance to cultivate ourselves. So think back to the time when you were children, and you were asked what you want to be when you grow up. Is that very impulse, right? Socialists take seriously. You can be, you can contribute to the world, to yourself. You can continuously be better, right? So that's, the first sense of free development is that we're constantly thinking, if not finding ways to improve ourselves. Second sense of free development, building on the first sense, is that we develop our potential by freely pursuing activities we love. The key word there is love, right? We all have activities we love doing for their own sake. Some of us blog, even though nobody we don't know if anybody reads them. Sometimes we don't care if anybody reads them. We do it because we love to, right? Uh, some of us have do photography. Uh, we don't care if anybody buys those photographs, we just love doing it because we love to. Some of us write poetry because this is just human beings, we're very creative, we're very expressive, right? And we do them, do these things for their own sake. Some of us play music, we don't even have to write our own music, we play other people's music, we do covers, what we love to, and we're cons constantly uh, improving ourselves, right? So the point here, and we're go we're, it's gonna get somewhere, I know it's very simplistic right now, right? But the point here is that our identity depends very much on the activities we choose, right? So, Bob is not just Bob, right? Bob is a, an engineer. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Bob is... <laughs> um, no offense to any Bobs in there, I don't know. Um, so, and this is something we shouldn't take for granted, right? Um, our identity depends a lot on how we spend our time and what the things we love to do, right? So how many times have you come across people who hate their jobs who don't want to associate themselves with whatever label it is, right? So some people feel ashamed of being a, jan being a janitor or being a, you know, a dishwasher and stuff like that because they believe that their activity does not define them, something like that, right? So the activities we choose, the activities we spend our, our time doing is a part of our development and identity, right? So. This is the second sense of free development, building from the first one. We pursue our potential to doing what we love. Right? And this is a very core human commitment. This is something that we all want. We all want to spend our lives doing what we love to do. Right? And socialists uh, take this very seriously. 